guess what y'all not getting today? Cute. <laughs> I've been stuck in traffic. In Orange County traffic, and so it has been a beast. I got a cute little board for you guys. Um, the issue is, though, I don't know if you guys are hey reese i don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this board the right way because i think when you show things hey nisi when you show things on facebook hey julie the 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 picture is flipped so you won't be able to see the lesson that i'm trying to show you but i'm just hoping that this will work this is going to be a really quick lesson today we're going to start promptly at 7 p.m. How are you guys doing today? Again, y'all not getting cute today because I was stuck in traffic. Um, then I had a little bit of a cold. I'm starting to get over it a little bit, but it's still bothering me. But I want to make sure that I give you a second part of the lesson. If you are new to the group, last week we talked about how to get out of negative patterns and... Um, Last week was a powerful message that you do need to go back and watch if you didn't already see it because it does connect to the message that we're going to be talking about today. And I'm about to get started. So last week we talked about how to get unstuck, how to get past negative patterns, how to get past negativity in our life. And the lean for um, last week's lesson was more of a spiritual lesson because to me I feel like a lot of the time when we're stuck in these negative patterns it's because we're not connected to our truth and who we are and where we want to move and we're in situations and we allow things to happen and occur and we allow ourselves to be in situations in which we are not honoring where it is that we maybe are and where we want to go and so you get trapped in negative situations point blank period because you are maybe not as brave or maybe a little bit more unwilling to face the fact that the situation that you are in right now is not the situation that you want to be in in the future however you are not being brave enough to align with something that you know your soul is saying is not right for you so instead we stay stuck in situations and relationships that don't serve us we know better we feel it deep down inside but we ultimately still don't honor that so that was a spiritual piece of why we get stuck in negative patterns and how we can learn to get out of those negative patterns again where you want to get that information from is in the lat in last week's live this week we are going to continue with how to get out of negative patterns how to get unstuck but i want to talk to you more about the scientific side of that for those of you that don't know me i like to teach you the scientific side because i think that that's very important but i do also think that the spiritual side the um intuitive side is just as important so today is more about the scientific side so you really do need to put the two together to be able to understand yourself more fully trying to walk your path in one direction without um, acknowledging the other so trying to be all spiritual without having any practicality makes no sense trying to be all practical without any spiritual makes no sense trying to be all intellectual without intuition makes no sense so i did talk about if those um, of you are new because we do have um, some new people in here if those of you if there are any of you that are new and you really don't know who I am, my name is Yashika. I typically would label myself as a spiritual consultant and a life coach because, again, I combine the two together in order for you to help develop self-mastery. But I'm almost thinking about just calling myself a self-mastery coach because, again, I think you have to have all of it together. My passion is not um, just spitting out information, it's giving you the information, the tricks, the tools, what I know that has helped me to shift my life in a very dramatic way and continue to shift my life in a very dramatic way. So 
Today we are talking about neuroplasticity and I have, see I have this cute little board and then I brushed the board and then I can see, I hope you can, it, it's probably backwards for you. So you tell me what you think about this. Maybe we won't use the board anymore, but I want to talk to you about neuroplasticity and neuroplasticity is just changes in the neural pathways in your brain. This is going to be very important because just as much as I tell you, you need to have a connection to your purpose. You need to have a connection to your inner self and your intuition. You also need to know that there is science behind these things because when you start to move in a different direction, change, moving your purpose, living your truth, you start to create changes in the neural pathways of your brain that actually facilitate you in thinking differently and manifesting differently and moving differently through your life and responding differently. And the way that these changes are created in your brain, um, pathways and synapses is related to your behaviors, that you exhibit the behaviors that you want to exhibit. So you practice your environment and other functions. Very important. So you can change the actual physical synapses and pathways of your brains by changing or, or by the way that you respond to your environment and the way that you behave in your world. This is important because if you find yourself being stuck in negative patterns, you have to learn how to interrupt that pattern. So we talked about part of it last week, but this week I want you to pay attention to the fact that if you can start to focus on how you can um, shift your physical brain through neuroplasticity, then you will start to see changes in your life. So today I just want to give you a couple tips on how you can do that. So the first thing that I have here is you need to try new things. And I, I'm saying try new things, but I don't mean like how we dabble in stuff, right? A lot of times we may get motivated to do things or motivated to do better for our lives or motivated to move in a different direction or say that we're going to recreate our life. And this year and this time is going to be different than the last time. We do that for a little bit but then we fall off. We fall off because we get lazy. We fall off because we rely on motivation, which is a myth. And we're going to talk about that later, but you, you fall off because you wait for motivation to help to move you and propel you and keep you going in the direction that you want to go in things that are unrealistic and things that set you up for failure. So when I say try new things, we're going to come down this list a little bit. I'm going to point something out because it's not only trying new things, it's trying new things and trying them consistently, not dabbling in them, not trying them for a week or two, a month or two, this is really being intentional about reworking how you approach life and the way you do it is by trying new things. Second thing that you can do if you find yourself stuck in negative patterns in life is that you need to connect with the purpose and the meaning of your life. So that's going to tie in to what we talked about last week about connecting to yourself, your purpose and your intuition. But by connecting to your purpose and your meaning, what that does is it gives you intention and intention brings focus. And what you focus on is what hardwires your brain a certain way. And so if you are focusing on your purpose, not what happened to you in a day to day, not the situations in the relationships that make you unhappy in the present, but if you are focused on a purpose and a vision for your life and a higher meaning for your life, your brain will start to be more hardwired to look at life through that lens, which is a more spiritual lens than the lens of your mundane everyday life. And so it helps you stay connected in your truth and your power and your purpose. People that are hardwired to only focus on what's happening in front of them the day to day without thinking about a truer and higher vision for themselves have a really hard time with moving out of negative patterns. And that's because they aren't connected to a vision and a purpose for themselves. So if you find yourself stuck, you might want to start here. I talked about that last week. So you can go back to last week. Meditation. 
Meditation is not for everybody. I will freely admit that I do not enjoy meditation. When I was struggling and really stuck in a very negative pattern, I did increase meditation because meditation was effective. Did I like it? No. Did I find it boring? Yes. When I'm sitting there and I'm having thoughts in my mind, it was running a mile a minute and not focused on meditation. Was it irritating? Yes. But the more that I did it and the more that I practiced, the more impactful and effective it was. And so if you find that meditation doesn't work for you, I want you to not be that person that says meditation doesn't work for me. Meditation works for you if you allow it to. That comes back to trying new things, trying them consistently, trying them with discipline, trying them even if they don't initially work, trying them with the commitment to the fact that even if you do not see evidence in the immediacy of what these things are doing for you, it doesn't mean that they're not working. They are scientifically, if you don't believe in the spiritual part, they are scientifically doing things to your brain, to your pathways, to the way that your brain works, thinks, operates in order to change you into a different person that thinks differently, that feels differently, that moves through the world differently. So you may not believe it, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't work. So this is meditation is something you should try. Self-awareness, I know again, it's probably backwards for you guys, but self-awareness is another thing that's going to help move you out of negative patterns. A lot of times, again, you are in negative patterns and you are stuck because you are refusing to admit the part that you play in a situation that you may be in. I'm not saying that there are things within our life that happen to us that don't have any explanation or meaning or that are, that are out of our control, but self-awareness can even be how are you responding to the things that are happening to you? How do you choose to interpret those? How do you choose to develop an attitude, a behavior, and a thought pattern around the things that have happened to you? And as you start to be more self-aware, especially of the things that you are not happy with, you start to be able to focus and hone in on those things. And by focusing and honing in on those things, you, you start to shift again, the way that your brain is hardwired. So self-awareness is another way that you can start to move out of negative patterns because you're going to see down here and I'll just maybe skip to it. I have take responsibility because then after you're self-aware, yes, things may happen that you don't like. Maybe some things happen that you perceive that you don't have any control over. But how, again, can you take responsibility for certain things in your life so that you can move forward? If you're in a relationship and somebody is hurting your feelings, where can you take responsibility? Can you not be in that relationship anymore? Can you choose to not let things hurt you? Yes, you can but can you choose to not respond um, to the things that are happening to you? That comes back to taking responsibility for what you do have control over. And that comes with self-awareness, which creates neuroplasticity or um, contributes to neuroplasticity, which then helps you to learn how to break out of negative patterns in your life from a more scientific standpoint. Look, I don't even, I can't even see this anymore. Oh, consistent practice, consistent practice. So again, if I'm telling you that in order for you to break out of negative patterns and that you can rewire your brain just by the way that you respond and you react to the experiences and the situations and the environments and the behaviors that you choose to exhibit in your life, and you know that it can change that hardwiring of your brain, do you think that's going to happen overnight? Do you think that's going to happen in a week? Do you think that's going to happen in three weeks? There are many different cells in our body. And again, I want to specifically talk to you scientifically, because if you don't believe the spirituality, I want you to believe science. There are many different cells in our body. Some of them turn over in a matter of days, in a matter of hours, in a matter of months, in a matter of years. So if you're working with cells inside your brain and they are physically 
proven to change the way that they fire and the pathways that they use to connect to each other in order to change your brain function, the way it is wired and the way that it works, then it's not going to be an overnight process. There are going to be certain cells that are going to be able to turn over just like that. But you have to continuously do the things that you may not normally do, learn things that you may not have normally known, behave in ways that you may not have normally done, maybe for not a day, not a week, not a month, maybe for a little while. That doesn't mean that you're not going to make progress, but as you are integrating this cellular turn, this as you're integrating these things that I'm talking to you about, the cellular turnover will happen and eventually you will start to see more tangible results exponentially. When you're investing in the stock market, you're not looking for your day-to-day gains. You're looking for that exponential increase in your money by incrementally investing in something and socking away value. And in the long run, if you do it the right way, you you then will receive like the biggest returns on your investment. So you have to think of you hardwiring your life, your brain, um, your purpose, who you want to be in this world, your relationships, your circumstances, your manifestations, all of that. You have to look at it like that. And you have to be able to be consistently able to practice. Again, if you don't believe me from a spiritual perspective, think of it from like I just gave you that example with cellular turnover. So it takes consistent practice. And then the last thing on my list is you need to get off autopilot it is so easy for for our brains to first of all take the path of least resistance so if you've already created a path of negativity in your brain a path and i'm not saying negative maybe you not don't feel like you're negative but negative can mean that you're not moving in the direction that you want so if you're moving in a direction or experiencing anything or thinking anything other than what's going to take you closer to where you want to be that's what i'm talking about when i say you're stuck in a negative pattern So if you want to get out of that negative pattern, then you have to get off autopilot. When your brain has already been working like this for a very long time, it's going to be very, very easy for you to continue to stay in that negative pattern because our bodies, human beings like to take the path of least resistance. Energy in general likes to take the path of least resistance. So it's going to continue to go in the way that you've always done things unless you purposely get off autopilot. The way that you can start to get off autopilot is to do things that you normally wouldn't do. So if you feel stuck, especially in a negative situation and you feel like you don't know what you should do, one of the number one things that you can do is stop doing what you would normally do. Do something totally different, totally disruptive, than what you would normally do and that already shifts the the momentum and the pattern and the energy now how do you keep that going that comes from that consistency that practice that purpose that meaning meditation self-awareness etc um so another thing that i wanted to mention to you real quick and i think this is my last point then i'll see if you guys have any questions when i'm saying for you to take responsibility for your life and for what's going on and your situations, your circumstances, your behavior, etc. I'm also saying that you also need to um, kind of appreciate the things that happen to you. Again, it's really hard to do that when you're stuck in a negative situation. However, being appreciative is something that will kind of shift you out of a negative mindset. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about was that you need to start aligning with things that are aligned with you. And that means you need to take responsibility for what you let into your life and who you let into your life. A lot of times we will sit back and we'll say we're stuck in a negative pattern, but when we examine our life more closely, who are we aligned with? Let's take an inventory of the people that you are connected with on a day-to-day basis. And if you are aligned with people that don't um, fit what you want your purpose to be and where you think you should be going, then what are you doing about it? It's not their 
responsibility to change in order to meet with you or align with you or meet you halfway. If something is not in alignment with your purpose and vision for yourself, what are you doing about it? And the same thing with the situations, you know, it's easier said than done, but still at the end of the day, if you want to want to be in a situation or associated with a situation that you know is not connected with what you want for your life, what are you doing about it? And you can make up every excuse in the book. And some of those excuses and reasons may be very valid points and reasons. But the minute that you continue to stay in that cycle of making up excuses is the minute that you have chosen to stay in that same neural cycle instead of learning new ways of doing things, learning, taking responsibility and self-awareness in order for you to start to shift that energy. So... With that being said, that is all that I have for you today. Again, this is the scientific side of what you can do if you have found yourself stuck in negative patterns, or negative situations, negative loops. If you want to combine, and I advise you to combine this lesson with the lesson from last week, which was more spiritual, because when you put the two together, you have a very robust picture of some things that you can do to learn how to move forward. If you are finding that you need a little bit more help with this type of a, um, with this type of with this type of information, do not forget that I have a free five video class that t goes step by step by step through some of these different concepts, and I give you like specific tools and tricks to help you to shift your mindset, shift your connection to yourself, and then that in turn will start to shift those pathways. So if that's something you're interested in, when I am done with this video, I will leave the link in the description somewhere so you can sign up for that. Um, otherwise, I will talk to you guys next week. Next week is, no, not, next week is not Thanksgiving. Next week I'm traveling, so I, um, if I can't get on live, I will definitely make sure I put a lesson up for you guys. So still come back seven o'clock Thursday, because if I'm not here live, there will be a lesson that will be here for you waiting for you. I want to talk to you guys about motivation because I'm tired of people complaining about how they don't feel motivation. It's a myth. You're not going to feel motivated to do things, even if it's something you think that you really want all the time and so i want to talk to you about it being a myth why it's a myth and how you can overcome that so that you can really start to achieve things in your life and not rely on that myth that we call motivation all right so i will talk to you guys later bye